I'm half English, half Newfie. I'll tell you a little bit about myself, which explains why I like to drink tea with baby seals that have been clubbed in the head. <laughs> I did that for me. <laughs> okay, you understand that, I guess. Do we have a lot of uh, anti-baby sealers here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Any seal clubbers here? By applause. Woo, Woo yay! Okay. Well, I'll tell you how this works. Uh, this is a live entertainment uh, venue here this evening. And so when uh, comedians or entertainers ask questions, you should applause, you know. Support them all. I'm Mr. Piss Break. Don't worry about me. You know, you can abuse me. I come up here between the acts, go to the pee. Go, you, where are you going? Okay. <laughs> you know, nothing will happen to you if you take a pee. Okay, we're going to play a little joke on this guy, all right? He just took a pee, right? <laughs> what are, I'm going to get you guys to work together with me on this one. When he walks back in, if I'm sharp enough to notice, is he still there? Can you hear me? No. Um, I'm going to just say a wacky punchline, like the end of a joke that you just already heard, but you never heard it, right? And then everybody, everybody laugh, right? Everybody laugh and applaud into uproarious, you know, noise, and he'll think that he missed the best joke that ever, you know, existed, right? You know, it's like sometimes you, you know, write that joke, and you think it's going to be the best joke that's going to make your career... And then you get on stage and nothing happens. You know, so many but it reminds me of the zen of being, you know, of telling jokes. I mean, if you tell a joke and nobody laughs, is it really a joke? You know. It's a good way to look at it. You know, I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a karmist. You know, I believe that the. <laughs> Let's go. What's happening? Hey, what's happening? The guy left this for the way, evening. This way. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be doing this all day. I think he's coming go. now. <laughs> Can we get somebody to go into the fucking washroom and see if the fucking guy's still there? Send in a spy. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight, though, folks. <laughs> and that's what her mother said. <laughs> I know, I know. No, that's a true story. That's a true story. I don't believe it, man. <laughs> so we got more stuff. Well, it just goes downhill from there, you know, so we'll just. Bullshit. <laughs> no, it's true, I swear to God. The guy's name was Derek McDonald. One, one testicle. One testicle. This guy, a friend of mine, got involved in a very unfortunate accident. True story. The guy's name is Derek McDonald. So you can call him up and say, Hello, Derek McDonald. Yeah, I heard you only have one testicle. So call up Derek McDonald, look him up on the phone. This guy got involved in a very unfortunate accident riding his bike. He slammed on the brakes too fast and racked himself up on the crossbar. Guys, if you can relate to that, thank you. Mondo, Mondo Pain. One of his testicles blew up to be about the size of a softball. He went to the hospital. He actually drove himself to the hospital on his motorbike. So, again... Proves it's a true story. Went to the hospital, had, had his testicle removed. I was talking to him after, after the operation. I said, hey, Derek, man, what's it like only having one testicle? And he said, well, guy, let me tell you, you know, it's tough. It takes me longer to get an erection and longer for me to achieve ejaculation. I said, whoa, wait a second. <laughs> Where can I get an operation like that? That's exactly what I need. What happens if I get rid of both testicles? Stud king? <laughs> I can go all night, baby. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I was wondering, though, what kind of a prosthesis would you have for that? Like a little fake testicle. Prosthesis? Yes. You can look it up. It's a word, right, folks? Prosthesis. Okay, so I'm fucked up. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, no. You're Tennis ball. Prosthesis. A prosthesis. A fake testicle, folks. Tennis ball. Well, tennis ball. It's a list. I don't know. Basketball. No, no, it's okay. Talk amongst yourselves. It's a list. I got it in front of me. What kind of a prosthesis would you have? You you can't have a fucking softball or a fucking baseball in there. Why not? Marvel. Marvel. So you need like a ping pong ball or something, you know? And it's like, gee, Doc, it feels really lifelike, but I got this strange pet fetish to be paddled all the time, you know? <laughs> Or a martini onion or something. Martini onion would be perfect. It'd be like, feels great, Doc, but I get a heart on every time I pass Pizza Hut. Uh, 
I'm from a different place, you know. I'm from a different era, you know. When I was a kid, I watched The uh, Six Million Dollar Man. You guys familiar with Six Million Dollar Man? Yeah. Anybody remember that show? Oh, yeah. Good show. So, I'll, like, you know, he had two legs, an arm, and an eye, right? For six million bucks. Today, you couldn't get a freaking little finger for six million bucks, you know? Look, today I'm the six million dollar man, you know? Can you spare some change? You got a booger. Hey, man, I'm the six million dollar man. Get out of here, you're fucking homeless in today's day and age. Six million dollars, that's not gonna buy you like a middle toe, you know what I mean? I keep breaking my shoes, Doc. You got a bionic toe, fucking relax, Steve. But Steve, I should have had the sunglasses on for that, but I left them at home. Guys, we got a huge show for you tonight. We got belly dancers and freaking burlesque uh, strip tease stuff and uh, one man bands and Jeez, I, you got seven bucks. You probably already made about two bucks, right? Like, come on, you would, you know, would just pay two bucks for the Steve Austin little finger, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's cool. So we still got, you know, five fifty. I can't say prosthesis, but you know, I can do simple math. Fine. I'm not making fun of you. I just am embarrassed that I may have been saying it wrong all this time. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is my, I, my old thing that I did was bartending, so, you know. I remember going in for the interview, never having any experience. Girl says to me, manager says to me, have you ever poured drinks before? I said, sure, I've been pouring them all my life, for me, you know. And I got the job as a cinch, you know, I'm polishing glasses, drinking my own mistakes, giving advice, and then all of a sudden, boom, the bar opens. Some guy comes in and asks for, uh, hey, barkeep, how about a zombie, you know. I don't know how to pour a drink to save my life, so I'm like, uh, <laughs> More brains. That'll be five fifty. Hey, barkeep, how about a cold Irish? Sure, we don't serve your kind here. Now get out. <laughs> Is that the worst Irish accent you ever heard? <laughs> Catch me, Lucky Charms. They're magically delicious. <laughs> May the road rise up to meet you. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. I like the drink names. I had the recipe right in their names. You know, they were easy to make, like rum and coke, coming right up. <laughs> Gin and tonic? You got it. Fuzzy navel? Oh, fuck, man. Jesus Christ. Thank you. I wrote that. So you guys are ready for your next act? I got to leave you on a good note here. You're supposed to be enthusiastic. Remember, I'm Mr. Piss Break. But well, you keep it going for the axe, babes. Is that cool? Oh, yeah. You guys cool with that? Yeah. Yeah. Good one. How's it going, buddy? Just gonna hit you with one last impersonation. I'm gonna need a little bit of a beat here. I'm gonna do Elvis Aaron Presley, the King of Rock and Roll, for you. Okay. Keep going. Oh, yeah. 